Welcome back everyone. This is Mindy Egan. In today's video, I'm going to be creating this beautiful forest winter scene using some new products from Honeybee Stamps. And wouldn't you know it, I made a mistake, but I'll let you know at the end how I corrected that. Now, this video is also part of a YouTube hop celebrating the holiday wishes release from Honeybee Stamps. Be sure to subscribe to the channels along the hop leave your comments to be entered into the giveaway and be sure to hit that thumbs up and like the video. Some of the products I'm going to be using today is the Watercolor Trees stamp set, the Snowflake background stencil, and also the Lovely Layers Deer die set. I'm going to start out by creating my forest and this is the Watercolor Trees stamp set. They really do have kind of that watercolor look to them. There are other techniques that you can do to make it even more kind of whimsical and watercolor look, but I am going for just stamping. So here I have some hammer mill cardstock. I stamped all of these trees in Tide Pool ink, which is the lightest of the two colors that I'm going to be using. I use Tide Pool a lot, so I need to re-ink it. I did go ahead and stamp that twice. And I'm going to bring in another sheet of cardstock and this time I'm going to stamp all of those trees once again in juniper ink. So this is the darker of the two. This color combination for trees is beautiful. It's going to be a go-to for me this holiday season. Now this one again, I'm going to go ahead and stamp it again to get them even darker. And then once these colors dry, they are going to dry back and smooth out. I'm also going to take the tree trunks and I'm going to stamp those in nutmeg ink. All of these ink colors are from Concord and Ninth, but you may already have colors that you prefer for your trees that you can use from your stash. Then I'm going to take the coordinating dies, line them up over the images and run these through my die cut machine. Now, one of the main things that I really wanted to do is I needed to make bigger trees, which is why I stamped out so many. So, the Lovely Layers Deer, it's a really decent sized deer. It doesn't take up an entire card front, but it is a pretty decent size. And I needed my trees to be proportional to the deer that I wanted to use on the front of the card. So I am going to just kind of take my pieces and match them up as best as I can where they don't look funny or lopsided. Once I find a matching partner, I'm going to add a little bit of liquid glue to the top of one piece and the bottom of the other to just make them bigger. There are also other tree trunks that you can use to make the tree trunks, um, I guess, taller and skinnier. They'll also make your tree bigger, but I didn't really want it that way. I wanted the actual tree portion to be bigger, not necessarily the trees taller, if that makes any sense. After I have my trees put together, I'm going to bring in the Lovely Layers Deer set. This is a gorgeous set and they also have a guide to show you how to create the deer. It is a beautiful image. You get a buck and a doe. But what I really like to do with the Lovely Layers sets is create silhouette images because they are so precise. So I die cut the body twice and the head once out of some poppy cardstock. This is just a really nice dark gray. I die cut the body twice so I could layer it together because those legs are pretty skinny and I wanted them to uh, have that stability of course like normal. So I just used my liquid glue to do that and my tweezers and the head I'm going to place over the top because I really needed to have my antlers. Once my buck is put together, I'm going to bring in my trees and just kind of start figuring out how I want the trees to be. The darker colored trees, I definitely wanted in the background. I have a couple of the lighter ones that I'll put in the front. But in the meantime, I want to create a snowy background. So I am going to go with Lilac, Lilac Ink to start with. It is a super light purple. I'm kind of starting in the middle of the cardstock with my blending brush and I'll have it fade off into white towards the bottom. And then I'm going to come in at the very top with a blueberry ink. Now this is a really, to me, it's a really true blue nighttime sky. It's not super dark. It's just a really gorgeous blue. So I'm coming in at the very top. I'm going to blend into the purple because I love blue and purple together for my wintertime skies. Then after my background is blended, 
I'm going to be using the Snowflakes background stencil. This is a two-piece stencil. It has kind of some smaller snowflakes on one and larger snowflakes on the other. So I brought in some grid paper that has an alignment grid on here for an A2 size card front. I placed a little bit of repositionable tape on the back of my ink blended panel so that it holds down onto my work surface. And then I brought in the stencil that kind of has these smaller snowflakes on it. And I placed that over this six by six grid line that's on here. I held that down to my work surface with post-it tape. And then I started out with blueberry ink at the top. And then I'll come in with a lilac towards the bottom. So I'm adding some subtle interest to the background. I'll remove that stencil, bring in my second stencil, which is the larger snowflakes. And this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring in that lilac ink, add that subtle kind of purplish tone to the bottom. Again, I'm staying away from the very, very bottom. And then towards the top, I'm going to bring in that blueberry to add those larger snowflakes to the whole card front. I'll remove the top layer of the stencil and then I'm going to come back around at the edges to just help intensify it. My original plan was to use this as a whole card front. So that's why I like to add that darker edge to it. If I trim it off, not really a big deal. So bringing in my pieces once again to start looking at my scene, I started out with the buck being tucked in between the trees, but I decided to go with this look instead. And this is using the Art Deco labels, one of my favorite die sets from Honeybee Stamps. And I created a frame from it. I'm going to go ahead and stamp a sentiment. I'll actually heat emboss it because I needed a little bit of sparkle to this. So I used that other piece of cardstock that came from uh, my frame and I prepped it with an anti-static powder tool. I'm going to ink it up with the Honeybee Stamps embossing ink. Now I want to be really careful when I stamp this down because there is some very fine lines in this sentiment. It is a gorgeous font design, very Christmassy. Uh, so I want to be very gentle. I'll go ahead and stamp it twice. And then I'm going to sprinkle on some gilded embossing powder. Since my sentiment says, I think it says it's a time to sparkle. It had the word sparkle in it. So I wanted to add sparkle to my card. I'm going to heat emboss that with my heat gun. And then I'm going to bring it back over to my Misty. I did prep it again with that anti-static powder tool. And I'm going to stamp this down one more time. This is going to be a double heat embossed look, which I really, really love. Now, I have had some mishaps before about double stamping. It doesn't bother me too much if I mess up with a sentiment because I can quickly redo that with no problem. In this case, it worked out, so I die cut it out with the coordinating die. I will take a tape runner and start putting my scene together. So of course my trees, my darker colored ones are going to be in the background. I'm just using a tape runner to attach all of the trees. I could have added some, maybe some thin foam squares to kind of help separate the trees a little bit, but I didn't want to have too much bulk going on. Now you'll notice there, I have one where it's literally just the topper of a tree. I didn't make a whole tree out of it. So I just want to make sure I have that kind of covered and you're not seeing my secret back there. I am going to add splatters, of course, to this. So I have some white acrylic paint mixed with water that I'm going to add to this background. And I made sure to do this after I attached my trees because I wanted the trees to have that snow too. I'm taking my frame that I created with that Art Deco labels die, and I'm going to add some foam strips all the way around the edge. I'll remove the backing of those foam strips, and then I can place this over the top. I always start in the bottom left-hand corner and just let my cardstock gently fall into place. And you can see I do need to trim off my excess. I was totally okay with that. I would rather have everything lined up and in my frame versus worrying about the edges. So I trimmed that off with my scissors. I'll also take those same foam strips and I'm going to add them behind the deer. Now the deer is going to be more in the front of the frame. So I added the foam strips kind of more towards the top half of the body. And then I added a liquid glue to the feet because the feet, I'm sorry, the hooves are really going to be the only part that's attached to the very front. So this is going to make it pretty level with my frame. 
I wanted to add some texture to my trees. I have seen people do this. I thought it looked really cool, but I really didn't pay attention to what they were using. So I brought in this grit paste snowfall, I believe it's called. And I'm adding that to my trees, just kind of grabbing a little bit out of the jar with a palette knife and just haphazardly putting it on. Now I'm going to say, I do not recommend this. I do not recommend this snowfall grit paste because after it had dried, it showed through to the color. It was very odd looking. My, my trees did not look healthy. So the next day I came in and I added some texture paste, um, opaque, I think it is. It's going to be linked and I'll star it down in the bottom in the video description. But I had went back and added the opaque white paste and it's going to look a lot better, more like snow is sitting on top of the trees. So it's not that the grit paste snowfall is bad. It just did not give the look that I thought it was going to. If you want to add sparkle to something where you can still see the color, then yes, I totally recommend it. But for what I wanted it for, it did not work. So I went ahead, finished this card with my sentiment that I'm going to have overlapping the frame and also the deer. So you're going to be able to get a better look in the pictures that I'm going to post here at the end. And they'll also be listed over on my blog. And it's going to show how it actually almost looks like frosting uh, with that opaque paste on top of my trees. Now, don't forget, this is part of a video hop. So like the video, subscribe, leave your comments to be entered in the amazing giveaway that Honeybee Stamps is doing. I will have the next person in the video hop linked down below. Thanks so much for joining me today. And I'll see you again real soon.